people who are in the know guess, and then but they think, well, this guy's in the know, so he said it, so therefore that must be what's happening. I think there's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen sure with that is. platform. Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay. So so basically, we're we recording. We're we're recording? recording. Okay, you're good. I can always right. trim it if I need to. So so, so basically, um, I guess you know what, what I wanted to talk about today. And not that I don't love seeing the admins, but I was hoping to see the agents as well today um, because we were having a meeting. How long ago was that, Chris? About a month ago, whatever, yeah, two months, months, whatever ago, it was. Yeah. And we were just talking. How long have I been gone? That's right. Yeah, you were there. So. Yeah. And Brad was still here. So it was a couple months ago. Yeah, it was at least yeah. a couple yeah. months. But anyway, the, the, it was an interesting meeting because what we were talking about was just, you know, Greg, we have all these different websites. Which one should we be using? How do we set it up? What should we do? What's the best way? And it led to a whole other conversation, right? So basically, what I want to do is just sort of lay out, again, and you probably already have at least some idea of this, so I apologize for the redundancy of it. I want to lay out what, uh, what you guys have available at this moment for technology. Rumors and future aside, because all of the future is rumors at this point. As far as I know, until somebody tells me otherwise, your database, your CRM, is market leader or eEdge. Okay. You uh, you also have a website, a lead uh, a lead capture website through eEdge or market leader, same same company, right? You also have a lead capture website through Placer, and you also have a lead capture website through WolfNet or MLS Finder or E agency. Okay, those three are all the same thing. So WolfNet, uh, MLS Finder, and E agency are all WolfNet. Okay, that, that's the manufacturer. So you really have you have three full functioning lead capture websites. Okay, you also have the fourth website that the KW Technology Department will tell you you have is your profile page because on the agent's profile page are their listings, and if somebody clicks on the listing and requests information, it's sent directly to the agent. So that's that's four sites right there, and now you also have the split of eEdge, you have eEdge and eEdge Pro. So the first question that was asked to me was, Greg, if you were a realtor, still, if I was still selling real estate, which website or websites would you be using? Okay, and to me it's website. Okay, so basically, um, to me, after reviewing all of them, I this is just nothing more than a personal opinion. My answer is, whichever one you like best, because all of them are doing the same thing. They're all there to capture leads, okay? I personally believe eEdge does it better than the other two. I like Playster. Playster's the newest, hottest thing, okay? Because it's the newest one. It's the one that we just got. And it's the one that they're putting all of the oomph and energy behind right now to make sure that people know that it's there. But the fact of the matter is, it's still just a lead capture website like any other. Now, Playster will tell you, well, we're a WordPress site, right? Which is a blog site. Blogs have an advantage. Does everybody know what a blog is, by the way? Okay. Blogs have an advantage in search engines. Right? The idea of a blog is it's a community. So everybody's sort of sharing clicks, they're sharing hits, they're sharing information, and that enhances you in Google. So that's a good thing. Uh, it's probably the best thing that Playster has going for it. But Playster's main objective is for you to allow people, buyers, to go to your agent's website and search and hence you capture a lead. No different than the other two. Everybody with me on that? Okay. So my biggest concern, and I'm an outsider now, I don't, I don't work for KW anymore, okay? But I still, I'm still pretty well in the loop. But as an outsider, I'm watching and I'm seeing all these different websites coming in, and I'm thinking to myself, I bet we have some really confused agents out there. Uh, because every time you add something, you add another level, another layer, and things can get a little, little confusing at times. So, so they asked me to come in and just talk about those things. So that's what I did. And they asked me which one would I use, and I said I would just stick with eEdge. And they said, why? And I said, it's the easiest one to set up. Period. It's the easiest one to set up. The fact of the matter is, you can put blogs all over your Placer site, right? The fact of the matter is, you know, you might get enough extra boost in your search engine optimization from that blog to move you from page 6,000 to page, being very generous, 60. Very generous. 
Does page 60 help you any more than page 6,000 does on a search result? No. 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 But in my opinion, it can hurt you. It can hurt you because you're now, instead of spending your time doing the lead generation and making your phone calls and your prospecting, you're blogging. Not that there's anything wrong with blogging, by the way. You can make money from blogging, but you know, if we have to keep stopping and setting up a different website and doing it a different way and learning a whole new skill set, it's kind of, in my opinion, it's sort of taking your eye off the ball. As a, as a top producing agent, that would worry me. Something that I don't really want my team having to, having to mess with. So to me, if you want to use Playster, go ahead. If you want to use eEdge, go ahead. If you want to use eAgency, I probably wouldn't out of the three. That would be my you know, least favorite. Go ahead. Okay. But focus on one of them. Okay, now I'm listening to the conversations that are going on here, you know, about all these different domain names and moving things, and it, it, it's just gonna be a never-ending circle. My, my theory is pick one and use it, and this is where the conversation started to take a turn. Because here, here, here's what I said. It really doesn't matter what website you have right now unless you can answer this question. Ready? How are you driving people to your website? Can anybody here answer that? And I'm not trying to put anybody on. I don't know if anybody's driving splash traffic. Pages. Okay, but where are you putting the splash pages? Where are you advertising? Social media. Social media, okay. So with social media, you can send them anywhere, correct? So that's really you driving the traffic from the people you are, you know, right? Maybe you're enhancing a post or something yeah. like that. Okay, so is anybody here really doing some type of a campaign? Campaign, uh, putting stuff in a magazine, um, sending out postcards, um, calling people up and saying, check out my website, it's really cool. What are you guys doing to promote your website? And if you're not doing anything, it's okay. I think anybody who's doing campaigns through Market Leader, the yeah. edge system, and it does have a link. Well, it's got a link website. to the website, but again, it's, is there anybody promoting that website, I guess is what I'm asking. Just through social media. Just the social media. And again, can we all agree, the way the social media works is this. person sees it, if they're interested, they click on it, they go to the website. doesn't matter which website. As long as they go to a listing, you pick the proper landing page, right? So in other words, if you go to, give, well, give me an example. How are you using social media? Uh, Facebook, we're posting our current houses we have up for sale. Okay, so you're posting your current Facebook just listed for sale on Facebook. And, yeah. Excellent, okay. Anybody else? Anybody doing anything different on Facebook to drive people to the website? No? People are, I mean, I'm not because I'm not Mm -hmm. right now. So, for instance, they'll say, you know, would you like to know what your home is worth in right. today's market or a little blurbs on a flyer? Right. Or Which is, again, little blurbs on a flyer about something right. else. Right. Right. So, so this is, and that's the end, by the way, these are the answers I almost always get. Right. Okay. So here's the thing, and, and I kind of like, I feel like I come in here with like a little egg on my face because I don't know if you guys know this, I used to work here. I was, I was a productivity, um, I was a productivity, I was a technology director. Okay. And I'm a former team leader. I was a team leader for several years. I was a top producing agent before that. So I have a lot of real estate experience. So when I got here, and my, my focus is this. I want agents to use technology, but I don't want agents to overuse technology. I'm one of the only technology directors in the country that says, eh, off on the technology. You're too much, you're counting on it too much, and you're forgetting to pick up your telephones. Okay. Did you just see Christmas Christmas talk at Inman? No, I didn't. And I meant to believe this out of my recording, but yeah, that was his whole thing. Like, and he's a big tech guy. Oh, you know, no, I think I did. I don't remember who it was, but I did read yeah. an article about he's, that. I did. He's about basically three weeks like ago. you're all hiding. The hiding is going on. And so his end message was basically pick up. Up the phone. Up the phone. This is what it comes down to, and so that, but but there is a use for technology. Now let's go back. I don't remember how long ago I worked. Let's say it was at least three years, maybe four years ago. Market leader uh, EH had really just come. It really, I mean, it had just really reached a mature stage. So maybe it had been out for a year or two by then, not even. And EH Pro was around, but we were in this is probably five, six years ago, maybe. We were in a completely different environment, okay? And this is one of the reasons why I try to tell people I'll back off on the technology. Technology just keeps changing. You can't possibly keep up with it. 
unless you just keep spending and learning. And what do we teach at Keller Williams? Do product productivity activities and spend as little as you possibly can, right? Learning how to set up a new website, to me, is not a productivity-based activity. Can we all agree on that? Productivity-based activities are when you pick up the phone or when you go knock on a FISBO's door. Not when you're behind, like you said, hiding behind technology. That's what a lot of people end up doing. What happened was, several years ago, six, seven, how long ago it was, Market Leader came along, E-Edge came along, and they said, we have a product called E-Edge Pro. And you have to understand, the biggest difference in our industry was Zillow had not basically dominated the search engines yet. This was at a time where, you, it's probably hard to believe if you've only been in the industry for a few years, there was a time several years ago where you could type in Portland Homes for Sale, Portland Maine Homes for Sale, and Realtors websites would come up. Not companies' websites, not Zillow's, not portal sites, okay? And at that time, Market Leader had a great product called E-Edge Pro. And E-Edge Pro cost $100 per month, okay? And I said to, to the office, I said, what we need to do, this is a great tool, because it had a lot of great search engine optimization stuff in it. It had a lot of other stuff, too. I'm going to talk about what it all is, okay? But my main concern was I knew that at that time to drive people to the website, I needed to dominate the search engines to do it. And eEdge Pro gave me the tools to do that. Now, obviously what has happened since then is what? Zillow has taken over, right? You know, Realtor.com, um, you know, you know, individual company websites, homes.com, whatever, you name it, right? In other words, we no longer control the search engines. So that very important piece of EH Pro kind of died off, okay? But anyway, at the time that wasn't the case, I'm jumping ahead of myself, at the time that wasn't the case, and it was a very important tool that we were teaching agents, go in there, change your meta tag, change the name of your page, pick a domain name that talked about the areas that you worked in, you wanted keywords in your domain, we would tell you to register your domain name for at least five years, because if you don't show faith in your company, neither will Google. You know, so we're teaching all of this stuff, okay? Now, what I said was, we need to, we have a big office here, we need to kind of flex our muscles a little bit, and what we need to do is get a group of people together, and I called the market leader, and I said, look, I said, if I get X amount of agents, how many agents would it take for us to get a discount? And this whole program was born based on a phone call that came right out of that office, okay? And the guy from market leader that I knew ran up the flagpole of that corporate world, and he called me back about a week later, he said, if you get me 25 people, we'll do it for $50 a month instead of 100. At the time, it was a no. I'm sorry, it was a no-brainer. If you were doing any internet lead generation, you needed Pro. You had to have it for several reasons. Reason number one: search engine optimization. Because at the time, it was very important. Okay. Reason number two: when a person goes to the eEdge Pro website. It's a, quote, stickier website. So it's a stickier website. Do we know what that means? Stickier means they stay on the site and they register. Okay? Now, how does eEdge work? A person goes, they view one property, and they don't have to register. Right? What happens when they click on the second property? You can control that. But eventually, they have to register. Well, you can't control that on eEdge. You can control that on the agency. Nope, not even with the problem. Unless they changed it very recently. Oh, okay. The agency you can control it. Yeah, I, they, they they may have changed it. I don't think so. It would be a bad move on their part if they did. Exactly. Zero or one is the right number. So, yeah. So basically, but the problem is that here's the thing. They needed to click on a second property in order for somebody to register. That makes sense? So here's one of the biggest. This is why I told the agents who were driving traffic to the website, this is why you need EH Pro. You need EH Pro because when that person gets to the website to view one property, you need other properties showing up on that page so that they click on a second property because that's when you can make them register. Does that make sense, everybody? So at the time, again, this is just to show you just how much technology has changed. At the time, one of the best tools we had to drive people to our eEdge Pro websites was Craigslist. 
right? Now, Craigslist has changed all their rules, and you pretty much can't do that. You, know, right? much, you can't do that anymore. But at the time, you would advertise three-bedroom, two-bathroom home in you know, Cape Elizabeth for $400,000, and then you just show them a link. They would click on the link to see the property. They'd go to your website. Okay. Now here's the problem. If you have regular eEdge and not eEdge Pro, they looked at the property. There's no other properties on the page. So they just closed it and went back to the Craigslist search. You see what's happening? eEdge Pro, on the other hand, I don't know if you've noticed this, when you go and view a property on the left hand side of the page is about 10 more properties that is similar to the one that you're looking at. And the idea is we need to get that second click. So they would see another property, they would click on it, and as soon as they clicked on the second property, what happens? Registration window pops up, and that's how you get your registrations in social, in, in I'm sorry, in um, uh, lead capture websites. And as soon as they register, you captured a lead. Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So without eEdge Pro, you did not have the ability to get that second click, unless the person just said, I'm just gonna stick around on this website. What also made it stick school information, which some people like, right? You know, the school information was right on the page. So when you went to the details of a listing, you went click and you saw the school information. You also saw a little bit of uh, marketing information, but unfortunately the state of Maine, the way that they don't release data, you know, your the, the market research that's on the EH Pro pages is pretty much useless because Maine is a I'm not going to say anything because I'm being recorded. So, uh, <laughs> Maine likes their dad. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, you know, so so that never really worked for me. But those are the main things. Those are the main reasons why you needed it if you were driving traffic to your website. You needed it to drive the traffic to your website, and then once you got them there, you needed it to make people register on your website because that's all you do. Here's the thing. I used to tell people this all the time. I want that website to do one thing and one thing only, capture the lead. That's it. Once that lead has been captured, I don't care if that client ever goes back to my website or not because the website did its job. Now, EH Pro had some other features that I call sizzle, not steak. These are things that agents like, but if we stop and think about it, very little productivity was coming from these things. For example, you went from having about 40 campaigns to having about 400 campaigns, which to me is way too many choices. Way too many. really need. So instead of having 40 different campaigns, you had about 400 of them. And I'm, I'm not, not exactly that big of a difference. You also had the ability to see, you could quote spy. And this is actually, Again, if you, this is another big reason if you're driving people to the website and the website's actually being used, this is another advantage to EH Pro. What I mean by this is when you register on my website, I can click on your name and then I can click on the middle tab. Okay, there's three tabs, right? There's a general tab, the middle tab, and I can look and see how many properties you've saved, what they are, how many properties you've looked at even if you didn't save them, and what they are, and I can see what time you're doing it, and I can see what day of the week you're doing it. Now again, if you have a lot of people using your site, is that a useful tool? Sure it is, right? So basically, if I was to sum it up, to me, EH Pro, this is why I said EH Pro is something we should be using. Number one, it helped with search engine optimization. In other words, it solved the problem of getting people to the website. Also, it worked well with Craigslist because once Craigslist sent them there, it gave me that switchover property. It gave me that second click that I needed to capture the lead. Number three, it allowed me to spy. So people who are actually using the website, I could go in and see what they were looking at. And that's useful information, okay? Number one, it's useful because you can see what they're really interested in property-wise. And number two, you can see what time of the day and what certain days of the week they were searching for homes. What does that mean? When you're searching for homes, what does that mean? Why, 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 does, why does that data matter to you? What time of the day? Well, what time of the day that they're, they're doing? on the computer, so you know when to call them. You knew when to call them, exactly. If I noticed that this person was always on some night, you know, nights after six or after seven, I'd probably try to get in touch with this person. So there's little bits of it, again, none of it's gonna make me a millionaire, 
Okay, but th these are all things that helped. The next thing that it gave us was, like I said, we went from 40 campaigns to 400 campaigns. The next thing that it gave us, which I also think is useful if you're gonna use it, but again, double-edged sword, because you can spend too much time doing it, is you can create your own campaigns. With regular eEdge, you can create a, mark a, a piece, but you can't turn it into a campaign. With eEdge Pro, you can create an entire campaign on your own. So again, that's a double-edged sword. Number one, it's a good thing because I can customize, but number two, I tell realtors all the time, you're not a graphic designer. Stop customizing things. The marketing material that we give you is more than good enough. Go sell real estate. So again, it's a nice thing to have, but very little money would come from that. Make sense? Forward six years. Zillow now dominates the search engines. Our own association, right? Real to real, right? We have we have an offshoot. I don't know even know what it's branded as anymore, but Realtor.com, which I know gets my index feed, so it has to have some type of association with NAR, okay? Uh, is is capturing leads, right? You have, like I said, homes.com, you have you have companies. I don't know, are there any white offices around here? Okay, if there was a Wiker, Wiker spends tons of money on pay-per-click. Caldwell Banker. Caldwell Banker is, of course, another big one. Big right? Caldwell Banker is another big one. And you're going to watch out for those Caldwell Bankers and their Wikers because what they're doing is they're picking up their phone and they're calling you up and saying, you should be working for us. Go, into, go to Google and type in homes in Portland, Maine, and tell me if Keller Williams shows up. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, I thought they were this internet technology company. I thought they were leading the way. They are. Well, they're not showing up on page one. We are. That's right, because you guys are capturing the leads and you're selling them back to your agents. In other words, it's worth it for you guys to spend money to capture leads. I don't want to compete with my broker. If Keller Williams was in that model, we'd be on page one too, right? So it's important that we all know that. That's just a side note, but it's important that the agents understand. The reason that you don't see Keller Williams on page one of the searches is because Keller Williams doesn't capture leads and sell them back to the agents. My point is it's very expensive to get to page one these days. Very expensive. Okay. So Craigslist is gone. Well, it's not gone, but we can't do what we used to do with it. You can't possibly get to page one through SEO at this point in the game. And I'm gonna say almost 100% on that. Almost 100% not going to happen. Again, it would take a lot of time and a lot of money to make it happen. A lot of time and a lot of money. So as you can see, in just a few years, every single feature that eEdge Pro had for us, this is how our discussion was going. We started to realize one by one, well, that doesn't matter anymore. So all of those SEO tools that, that it had for us don't matter anymore because it can't get you anywhere near page one anymore, right? Number two, what good is having the side properties and the ability to spy on people if there's nobody on your website anyway? If there's nobody there, who can you spy on? Okay? What good is having 400 campaigns when the 40 you have are more than good enough? You only need, by the way, if those of you who are taking my course, I don't think anybody here has an email. I'm not sure. Uh, I use six campaigns total. Every bit of my database is handled with six campaigns. I don't need 400. I need to focus on top of mind. That's my main focus, okay? So all of those features that we had for EH Pro kind of don't matter anymore. Well, I said, I was talking to the group, and I said, why, do you guys still have EH Pro? I said, yeah, a lot of people on it. So I said, what are they doing with it? I don't understand. Like, why would you still have it? And we were like, she said, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. So I want to bring the agents in to find out what they're doing with it. So my question for the three of you who are here, what are your agents doing with the edge product? That's my first question. I know they use the contacts. Contacts, okay. And I'm now when talking. you say use contacts, can you be a little bit more uh, specific? Well, I know our buyer agents will look at them for leads and then 
I'll see what they're looking at. Okay, so yeah. the buyer agent is looking at it for leads. Now, how, all right, so you have a team. To call, yeah. So now, do you have one account, like one main agency you can get individual EIG accounts? I think we have two accounts, but I think the buyer agents go into the main one. Okay. So they okay. So they're using an individual account as a team account, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So they're just going in. They're just using it basically. It's safe for me to say it's kind of like the phone book. Like they go in there, they get the names and the phone numbers. Who do they have to call? Or is there something in there triggering well, they, telling them to call? They do mark the leads whether they're hot or cold. I haven't worked with them a lot on. They mark the leads hot or cold. That's okay. And they're okay. trying to start to sort them in groups. And sort them into groups. Okay. Everything so that you said to me, <laughs> and you can put them on a campaign. Everything you said to me can be done in regular e -hash. Now, one of those things that you talked about is a pro. Okay. okay. Uh, what else do you guys do in eEdge? Um, not really sure. I haven't worked with them. On okay. The edge. That's all right. Yeah. I think it's more some of the campaints because yeah. the pro has more I'm going to get to that. Yeah. So I okay. think for the agents what, who are using that, let's. What about, uh, what do you guys do? What does your team do? We have campaigns. We do um, campaigns. Okay. And, you know, okay. Not sure which ones are right, exactly. Okay. Um, so you're not using the website, in other words. You're not driving traffic to the Edge website. You're not going in there to look to see who's on the site every day. And okay, so again, you're not using any of the, other than maybe some pro campaigns. Which again, you know, we just need to get over the whole thing of I need better marketing. You need to be consistent with your marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to be better than anybody. You need to be more consistent than everybody, right? So, so again, you're using maybe you're using pro campaigns, but again, your team isn't really using pro. I mean, I would not pay an extra hundred bucks a month just to have those extra campaigns. So she paid. Well, they're paying 50, 50. 50. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's a hundred, but you know, so okay. I wouldn't pay fifty a month for those extra campaigns. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, well, we consistently try to drive the traffic through this. Domain name for the www.wabagamelosi.com. Okay. And so. And it's going to the EX site? And it goes to the EX site. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And so you get leads. Well, now, George, George is a unique example here because George, um, you know, a smaller area, which before the days of Zillow and Trulia was ignored by Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com. George was a realtor there for a long time. You guys were. So you still have some decent SEO. So you guys would probably be the first exception. So just out of generally, um, roughly, how many leads would you say after a month on the EH side? Um, roughly, probably four or five. Four or five a month? A month. Okay. Which is, believe it or not, these days that's great numbers. That's great numbers these days because it's like I said, it's, unless you pay a ton of money, it's very hard to capture leads these days. It's become its own industry. And that's what changed. Sure, that's what changes. It became its own industry. Okay. So basically, so like now, what George is doing now, George could make a case that he might still need pro because for him to capture four or five people a month, forty to fifty have to be visiting the site. You capture roughly one out of ten with pro. You'll catch a substantially less than that with regular E Edge. George may say, you know what? Just for the lead capture power alone. It may be worth it to keep it. Maybe. Now I could also ask how many of those four or five in one team close, and that is what will answer the question. We should take the call, so we can't ask that yet. But I'm going to ask that question. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, because again, because that may make the decision. Okay, but otherwise, um, what I'm hearing is exactly what I expected. We're all using E Edge, but we're paying for Pro because we're afraid to make a change. Oh, by the way. Um, Sandra, how, uh, roughly, and again, I don't know if you know this, but out of those four or five leads a month that you capture, what I said was to capture four or five, you need 40 to 50 visitors with pro to and capture I don't, four or five. I don't that. Right, and that's okay. That, that's just a ballpark average. Out of those four or five, how many would you say you close? Probably one, okay. maybe two. Mm -hmm. It's not high. Uh, it's not high, but it's, here's the thing. For let's just say let's just say you had to pay the regular price of hundred dollars for each. I would pay hundred dollars to close to a month because I'll tell you right now with regular edge you're gonna you're gonna capture less leads because you don't have that second click. 
you don't have that, that extra little bit of stickiness, okay? You have to double check your numbers, right? Find out how many you're definitely capturing, how many of you definitely close, and say, is this worth either $600 or $1,200 a year? Because here's the thing, if everybody else is gonna get out of the program, it's gonna go to full price for those couple of people who need to be in the program. But here's the thing, here's what I need you to understand. If you are one of those people that are going to keep it, and if, if this all, you know, again, I'm just, I'm doing hypotheticals here. If you decide, if this office decides, look, you know what? You're right, this is crazy. We're spending this money and we don't need to be. And we drop well below that number, the price is going to go back up to $100 a month. To make a deal a month, would you pay $100 to make a deal a month? Yeah. Of course, absolutely. It's well worth $100 for you, in other words. For you too, is it worth $100 a month just to have a few extra campaigns? My hundred, <laughs> not my hundred. Okay, but now if, if your team lead says, yeah, well, it is worth it for me, great. Then it's worth it for you. But what I'm hearing is no one's really using EH Pro for what EH Pro was designed to be used for. And it's not, it's not the agent's fault, it's that the industry just keeps changing. It's that the industry just keeps changing. You see what I'm saying? And I think those agents that are really concerned about the capture portion of websites, they're all going to be ah, talented. Bingo. And that's why it's all changed. If you're really, really trying to capture a lot of leads, you're not sending them to your website. You're sending them to your Boomtown site or your Passions <coughs> Inc. site or whatever. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Whatever. Which costs you. Look, I mean, last time I looked, Boomtown was 1500 a month. And that's before you paid for any leads. But here's the thing. If you're using Boomtown, you have no use for eEdge. I know a lot of agents around the country, not just in this office, that have Boomtown and eEdge Pro. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Why in the world would you pay 1500 bucks for Boomtown every month and then still be paying $100 Pro? And you know what the answer is almost 100% of the time? It's what we just said. First drill down, you know, because I'm a why, I'm a why person. I don't, I don't let you get away with, you know, being like, okay, but why? What are you doing with it? Why do you have it? And you know what it always comes down to? I just don't want to have to make another change. I don't want to have to make another change. So let me talk to you. If you decide, you know, if an agent here decides to get out of the H Pro, and I'll be honest with you, I think that one of my main reasons here was hopefully was to ask the agents why are you still using Pro? Because I want to. I'm very curious for the website. Remember, the Pro part is for the website. If you're not driving traffic to the website, you don't need Pro. Period. Very curious to see how many are. And if you are, and if you're driving traffic to it, I think it's worth $100 a month. I really do. If you're not, I think you need to drop it. Which leads to the next question. How do I drop it? Well, it's not anywhere near as hard as you may think. Is there some work involved? Yes. Will there be help? Yes. Okay. So here's what would happen. Let's just say that you were an agent who decided you wanted to drop EH Pro. First thing that happens is this. One of the other the one of those SEO advantages to EH Pro versus EH is you had your own domain name. So when I had EH Pro, my domain name was soldbygreg.com. And when somebody clicked on that, it went straight to my website. It didn't forward anywhere. When somebody typed it in, boom, it went right to the right to market leaders computers. Okay? That's good for SEO. If we still cared about SEO, that would be a big selling point. Make sense? When you have regular eEdge, you have a subdomain, which would be soldbygreg.kwrealty.com. So a domain name is kwrealty.com. That's the domain name for all of the eEdge accounts. A new agent that doesn't have a problem. And then your little piece of it is something.kwrealty.com. Sold by Greg in my case. Everybody with me? So you say, all right, but what about my domain name? All you need to do, and this market leader will do with no problem for you because you're not leaving them, okay, is you call market leader. If you own your own domain name, you can do this yourself. You, by the way, does everybody here know how to get a domain name? Go to GoDaddy and register it, okay. You know, market leader will kindly register them for you and they don't charge you the $12 a year. But like I said earlier, they kind of own your domain, kind of. 
Okay, like you had said, some people, they wanted their own their domain transferred back to the market, we said no. They've been doing it. They, they'll be doing it, but here's the thing. Even if they do it, it's a long, tedious process. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, so one thing, and I would go, by the way, I would go through that process. I want my own domain name. Whether you're using regular eEdge or eEdge Pro, you should start the process of transferring that domain name to you. Okay? Now, Chris, you have instructions for them to do that? Because I don't want to get into that today. Yeah, I okay. can help. See, Chris, she can help you. If you don't own your domain name, go to instructions. If you don't know if you own your domain name, okay, go to whois.com, W-H-O-I-S.com. Okay, type in your domain, and then just to the right, it'll say in little blue letters, it says, so in other words, it's going to tell you that domain has been taken, but if you look off to the right, there's a little link that says who is. You click on that, and that will show you all the registration information for that domain. If it doesn't have your name and phone number on there, it probably has market leaders, and that means market leader owns it. At that point in time, you you should go daddy, and if you don't already have a GoDaddy account, set one up and initiate the transfer. We're telling GoDaddy, we're telling market leader, transfer it from your GoDaddy account to my GoDaddy account. Now they don't use GoDaddy beside them, right? Okay. So transfer from your account to my GoDaddy account. And then they're gonna go in and emails, and you're gonna wait days for other emails, and it's a pain. But get it over with because you want your domain. George's domain, right, George is again, believe me, George is not getting uh, 50 visitors a month and five leads a month because he's advertising his website. He's getting it because he has SEO because he's had it for so long. You know what I mean? And he has a, a, a market penetration in that area. That makes his domain name work a lot. You can't give that to market leader. I'm assuming you own your own because you would have had it long before. Okay. So if you own your own, you really don't have any trouble with the domain. You're simply going to go to your domain, go to GoDaddy, and I'm sure Chris can show you how to do this, and you're going to forward it. So you say, all right, I'm getting on a pro, which means your website is no longer sitting at soldbygreg.com. It's now sitting at soldbygreg.kwrealty.com. Make sense? And all you need to do is tell GoDaddy, whenever somebody types in soldbygreg.com, forward it automatically. You don't have to do a thing. They won't have to do a thing. It'll automatically forward to soldbygreg.kwrealty.com. That's it. You're done. The domain part, you're all done. That makes sense? Any questions on that? Okay, so step one, find out if you own your domain. Okay, if you don't, stop the transition to get it back, okay? If you do, just go to go. And I'm sure if Chris can't, you can't, right? Okay. You can also the option to, because the first person that I ran into this with yeah. was Sam and Harvey. So, um, um, but anyway, so it was. This is when we discovered. Oh, this is not so easy to just change your domain from sure. one to the other. So one solution also is to just go and buy a new domain. Well, you could do that. But like I said, if you have a seasoned domain like 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 George, yeah. but, but, right, and, you don't want to lose it. But that is honestly, but if you keep that domain, but you kind of just give market leader yeah. this substitute domain. I'm rebranding myself. I want to start using this new domain. Release oh, okay. So like, what you're saying is go by. All right. So so I, I like to do by example. So I have soldbygreg.com, which I want back, and market leader has it. So what you're saying is go buy something like, like um, soldbygreg.net. Yeah, soldbygreg.net. Okay. Tell and then you tell market leader. You want to swap out and you want right. To I want my e edge website to go to soldbygreg.net, but you still have to do the transfer. You do still have to do the transfer. You still have to do the transfer. But they so. they've been. But they're more like. Okay. With, with that, then yeah. just like, Okay. So. I hate to have to go through that extra I know. step, but I know. hopefully they'll do the right thing and give you a domain back. You know, because I that they should. Yeah. Okay. So so that's the uh, now the, the third option is to just leave the domain with GoDaddy uh, with um, Market Leader, and then just call them up and say, listen, I recently got out of Pro. I just need you to fo you guys are, you guys are controlling that domain. I need you to forward soldbygreg.com to soldbygreg.kwrealty.com. They can forward for you, and they will as long as you're still using a market leader product, which regularly eEdge is. 
But again, like I said, all that's going to happen is at some point in time, you're going to have to get that domain back from them. You might as well just do it now. Get that domain back. But if you just want, if you're like really busy right now, I just need a quick solution, right? Then just call them up, say, listen, I just dropped pro. I need you to forward my pro domain, soulbygreg.com, to my subdomain, soulbygreg.kidabareals.com. Everybody with me on that? Yep. That handles the domain. Any questions? Okay. Part two, are you going to lose your contacts? Good okay. The answer, and I'm, 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 I'm pausing before I answer this. The answer used to be no. Your contacts will all stay right where they are. They'll all stay right in the groups that they're in. Unless there is there is an uh, there is an exception to this. One of the advantages of Market Leader Pro, and I hope you don't ever need this advantage, is they allow you, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing on the numbers, I don't remember. Regular eEdge gives you 25 groups, something like that. Okay? eEdge Pro gives you like 100 groups. It's 50. 50, okay, how do you get I don't know. I'm there. guessing. If but if you are one of those people who created a group for every single person in your database, you're going to lose some groups. Okay, you might lose some groups. Okay, again, now, the way I teach it, again, merge six groups. Before. What's that? Maybe merge and actually, I'm Yeah, you might have to do some merging before. Them before. Because I have had like, some people lost them. But with the phone well, phone I would phone always phone do an export to be on the safe side before you cancel. Do an export just to be on the safe side. But um, but if you have a lot of groups, and Chris, you might want to call market leader and say, how many groups do I get with e edge and how many groups with Pro? Yeah. Because you might want to say, hey, listen, if you're over, let's just say it's 50. If you're over 50, you might want to merge, like you just said, merge some groups together. Okay. And again, Chris can show you how to do that. If not, call me and I can show you how to do that. So you want to get under whatever the limit is. Once you've done that, your groups should all be there. Now, the problem is going to be, and Chris, I would like you to confirm that because, like I said, I haven't spoken to Mark Leader in over a year. Make sure if they disengage. From Pro that they still that they're not that they're not going to wipe out the whole account. Okay, it should it should just lock back up the Pro features. Okay, that's what it's always done. Okay, the only thing that could be an issue to you, assuming we get the right answer back from Market Leader. Okay, the only thing that could be an issue to you is if you're using the Pro campaigns, they're obviously going to disappear. And we need to turn on new campaigns. And I'll be honest with you. It takes you roughly a minute to turn on a campaign, to activate a campaign. And when you only have 40 choices instead of 400, it's much easier. <laughs> now, I one of the things that I'm looking to do here is I used to teach a course here on ES. It's a five-part course that I would like anybody who's transitioning out to take because I think this is a great opportunity to regain control of your database. Okay, it's a good opportunity to regain control of your database and to kind of streamline your marketing. Okay, so basically, if you decided that you wanted to switch out, right, you guys say, you know what, Greg's right. We used to use this. We're not using it anymore, but we're all we're just paying fifty bucks a month just because we're comfortable with it and we're not using it. The fact of the matter is, and again, Chris is going to double check. I wish I thought of this in advance. I would have called him and had that answer for you. I feel. I feel like I, I dropped the ball on that one, but it just didn't come to me until just now. There's always a possibility that they change it, you know what I mean? I don't want to say it with any certainty. But the bottom line is that step one, you have to deal with your domain. Step two, we have to make sure your contacts don't go anywhere, make sure that you're under the limit of groups. And then step three, you're going to have to turn new campaigns on. Now, turning campaigns on should not be hard because you're just going to say, put these groups on this campaign. You're going to activate a campaign, put the groups on it. Again, if you don't know how to do that, Chris does. Now, at the same time, this can be a great opportunity for you to take your database and turn it into a very, very well-oiled machine. Okay, it's just a good opportunity to do that. We will never have to worry about databases ever, ever again. Okay, and if you want to do that, that's when I would come in and teach my five-part course on eEdge. Now, here's the good thing: if you say, "Yeah, but Craig, let's talk. Let's address these rumors for a minute now." There's all rumors. Okay, great. Your system that you're using, I don't know. I don't care what they go to. I have no idea if it's going to work for you or not. If you use my system, I don't care what they go to. It's going to work. Because my system is based on a system, not a database. In other words, my system is based on, like, my system will work in any database. It's, it's based on the database itself, not the software. 
So, for example, one of the most important things to me is when I see a sphere of influence group. That's good. I like to see a group called sphere of influence. What I hate to see is a group called friends, a group called family, a group called neighbors, a group called um, past coworkers, people I went to high school with, people I went to college with. You know why I don't like to see that? That's six different groups that all mean the same thing. They're all sphere of influence. You got it. You see what I'm saying? So we take these databases and we overly complicate them. So it might be a good opportunity to take a second look at how, you know, how we're doing it. I mean, look, I, I will ask a question. You all work for top producing agents, I'm guessing, or they, would, they wouldn't have administrators. Who's successfully 33 touching people right now? And hold on, don't, don't raise your hands yet. By 33 touching people, they're making four phone calls, sending out four handwritten thank you notes, and sending out one email a month and one postcard a month. Who's doing that successfully? You know why that doesn't happen successfully? It may be a handful. Maybe. Maybe. And I'll bet you the ones that are took the course. I'll bet you the ones that are took the course. Really pieces of it. You get beat. That's the problem. Pieces right. don't. Pieces work. But they don't get you the results that, that Gary Keller promises you. Promises you these results. If you do this, you will get these results. Why don't we do it? Because we're all slaves to our database. Basically speak working for us and I'll get the way around. So again, it might be a good opportunity to do that. My point is this, I'm not trying to sell anything, it's not set up or anything like that. It won't cost you anything if we do it, that I promise. I'm just saying there's plenty of help because I, I, look, I'm just gonna be very blunt. I don't know why you guys are all still paying the possible you. <laughs> why you guys are still paying for EX Pro. I hate to see $600 a year coming out of your team leader's pocket just because they don't want to go through maybe a day of pain. <coughs> and really, it's your day of pain. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like I'm married to mine. That's a lifetime of pain. <laughs> no, and I do think a lot of agents don't even realize what the pro account entails. Yeah, it, 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 it's true. And it's like I said, I feel like I have egg on my face because here I was, I was the guy who came in here screaming, we need this for everybody several years ago, and now here I am back here saying, why are you guys still using it? <laughs> you know, I feel a little, but it wasn't, I wasn't wrong six years right. ago. It's just things that change. It changes just so rapidly, so rapidly. And it's like, like all these different websites, which one should you use? I don't care, pick one and use it. I say E-Edge, why? It's, set up, it's already set up for you. It's a 10 minute setup. I'm here. I haven't. I haven't really done any place to set up, but I know it's taking hours. No, it's not. You can get it done in ten minutes. No, I'm talking about the people who are going in there and trying to really customize and build oh, and blog. I, and, I thought it was really easy. It is. It is. Honestly, it, okay, let me, let me rephrase this. Hang on. Let me rephrase this. Really it's an like easy this. setup. It's an easy setup. Okay. But when you start trying to use every single thing that's available in there, you lose hours. It, it oh, once it's, yeah. once it's that, I, I this is say one of the problem. biggest advantages right here. What's the that? Edge sites do not render on a mobile phone. Sure, they do. They're not, they do not. They do not adjust to whatever device you're on. Since when? Always good for me. <laughs> they work, but they don't automatically. They I have to check that they now. They don't automatically adjust to um, compensate for whatever device. Um, Somebody is on. Hold on, I have to. Uh -uh. I have to check this. Hang on, because it always did for me. So uh, this is news to me. So I just want to. All right. So so. Okay. And again, like I said, I, if you want to use Blazor, that is totally fine by me. You know, what I mean? I'm not trying to. I am certainly not here to talk yeah. you into one or the other. One of my challenges, I'm just going to be honest with you. Sure. It just gives you the whole site. It doesn't really render it in a friendly response. Yeah. Yeah. Small. No, you know what? You're right. No, there's a mobile version. This isn't it. So it doesn't automatically. It doesn't automatically. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the mobile, you're right, the mobile site is not here. One of my challenges, honestly, uh -huh. and you could really help me with this, is so many people 
I just like, oh, I need another database. I need to. Go, I'm going to go out and buy this. And I'm going to buy that. Yeah. My database. And I'm yeah. going to buy this. Because they're going to spend away their trouble. And I'm kind of like, you know, ES will do everything that you need. That's right. As long as you use it. That's you have to use it properly. Yeah. Well, it's not a matter of using it. It's using it right. If you don't, this is why. This is why. Like when I worked here, that five part. Over and yeah. Over and over again. Because. It didn't just teach you how to use eEdge, you know, how to use, you know, what buttons to push. It gave you a strategy to building a database and doing exactly what I just described to you. Getting an email a month out, a postcard a month out, four phone calls, four handwritten thank you notes. And we did it by keeping the database simple. Strength through subtraction. You know, addition through subtraction. So it, it, any, here's the problem. If you have a person who thinks eEdge doesn't work, it's their system that doesn't work, which means when you move it over to whatever the next latest is your system's not going to work there either. You have to implement a system that works. And like I said, I don't care if somebody uses eEdge. I don't care if they use top producer. I don't care what they use. I really don't. It's, in place. it's the system that you put in place that's going to make you succeed or fail. Like and that's that. been kind of my message is any database will work if you if you work it. You know, if you do the right, right. thing. But you don't have to be the database eats people up. They make it, like I said, when I look, I told you, you know, I'll tell this in my class all the time. My first effort at a database was just a big mess. I didn't have any groups. I just, I was taught, you talk to every single person you ever meet, and you get their name and their phone number, and you put them into a database. That's what I did. I just had a big, long phone list. That's all it was. Thousands of names. Didn't know any of them, right? Then my second shot at a database, I overly, to a point where I couldn't even figure out the system that I implemented, right? <laughs> and, and it was like, okay, like I had to find the habit. Like I, I literally, at one point, I had over 100 groups. I need six, not 100. I need six. I need leads. I need buyer prospects. I need listing prospects. I need Sphere 33. I need another group called Sphere 21. Numbers at over 100. <laughs> right? How do you think I could maintain 100 different groups? That's why we're not 33 touching people. Yeah. That's why people are saying my database doesn't work. The database does exactly what you tell it to do. Or oh, they wouldn't be on the market. They wouldn't be on the market. So believe me, there's nothing in the Edge Pro that's going to help their database. It's just going to give them more campaigns to choose from. Turning on, yeah, turning on, God, you know. Just turning on email campaigns and saying I am lead generating. Oh, you're not. You're not. I mean, you're, you're, you might. I mean, you might be the one <laughs> that gets one piece of business from emails, but you'd be the one, and that'd be it. You're not going to make a. You're not going to make a career out of that. So, I guess. Do you, but do you feel email marketing is still relevant? When <laughs> when working with phone calls, it is. Just to send emails to people. No, if I don't know you. And you keep sending me emails, I'm not going to call you. It's never going to happen. That's me personal. Like I said, I can't say that that's going to happen for everybody. But the odds are very good. So that unless there's some personal connection, I will never call you. What if you've met once three years ago? That doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, you know, it, it, it's not very helpful. Now, if you take those emails and you follow it up with phone calls, now I say it's very relevant. Very relevant. Yeah, it's, it's a strong party of 33 touch at that point. Absolutely. So, again, you pick a website. I don't care which one. You pick a CRM. I don't care which one. Just make sure you get a system for it. But what I'm really here to talk about today is pro. I told you what the differences are. The question is, who still needs it? And if you do still need it, start to consider possibly is it worth paying $100 for instead of $50 for? Because this program, this discount program, I take it away. No, not really, because it's always been $100. So you've been getting it for $50. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you're way ahead of the game. You know what I mean? Um, you're getting it for $50, but it's, it, it does cost $100. So if this program is to go away, you have to stop and say, is it worth $100 a month instead of $50 a month? So you want to say very thoughtful. Assuming the numbers you're saying are that, because, you know, it's hard. I put you on the spot in the middle of the room. <laughs> you know, you go back and you look and say, you know, remember, a lot of those leads that show up in eedge.com 
Right. And they right. just filter in this. Right. Make sure you so look I at the source. Look the source. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and again, and if it is, I personally would say, yeah, it's probably worth keeping. Because if you're getting one closing a month out of it, $100. To not lose one closing a month as well. well so even if it's different, even if it's one every couple of months. You know? exactly. The most part, most of us, the traffic that's coming in there has nothing to do with the pro part of it. That would be trouble. Right. Yeah, that would be trouble. So again, like my my goal today was to talk and see what you guys are doing with with e Edge Pro. But I think what we did was just as good today to say, all right, look, what are the advantages? Go back, talk to your teams. Do we need this? And say, look, here's the transition out. It's not a big transition out. Don't do it until Chris checks with Market Leader, though, because here's the thing. If Market Leader says, and listen, look, they're a company. They're there to make money. They're not there to make your life easier. It's very possible that Market Leader might have said, hey, why are we making it easy for them to switch out of pro? Let's just wipe the account right out. Then they'll never leave. And even if they do that, it's just an export and import. It can, it can still be done. I am sure this market center can put something in place to help you with that transition. And we did have one experience that, that their contacts were gone when they got rid of the program, and they called market leader and they... They did, okay. So, yeah. like I said, and again, I am like and 99... And it might have been the group thing, I don't know why. It might have, might have been. Yeah. I am like 95% sure that your contacts will serve that. I just don't want to say that with 100% surety until somebody just... I only Double check. One that that's happened. Right. Okay. So then so we've right. had a few people leave market. But like anything, so. before you call to cancel, just do an export. But here's what you have to remember. This is, and again, I don't think they've changed this. Yet. Actually, I think they did. I think this just changed. When you export now, does it export the group column? It did never used to. You but can export the group. You group can group. now export the groups. Good. Okay. So good. So just do one big export. What used to happen, you couldn't export groups. So you saved everybody, but nobody was in groups anymore. But I remember reading that they added. Yeah, they did a couple groups things. Now. Groups. Yeah. One, you can good. put multiple people into a group at a time. Do yeah. That, that. Yeah. And that's yeah. As long as you can export and see the groups when you're done with the export, that way when you go to re-import it into regular eEdge, you can just import one group at a time into the appropriate group. There is nothing there that's going to be hard to do. And then we'll, you know, if this is to happen, we'll make sure that there's going to be plenty of support. You know what I mean? So, any questions? I, in my experience, the people who have left pro because we always well, and that's become that's what the problem is. I think the the one um, one person said they used to like to look at what people were looking at on their website. Sure, so the spy. Only right. had one person. Right, but again, the, but the reason that they, they said they used to like it, I'll bet you any reason. The reason why they don't like it now is because there's nobody on the website, yeah. you know, to spy on. Right. Well, they felt like that that was a feature that they lost. But yeah. I think they decided they could live with that. And then the campaigns, if you've got pro campaigns, so yeah. just to be conscious of, if you do have some of those, yeah. maybe before you get rid of pro, you just want to transition those people over to it. I would, um, yeah, and again, I'm not sure how that piece works. If the other, if the, if the basic campaigns will just continue along, or if all of the campaigns yeah, it's are just, it's just the pro one. It is just the pro campaign. Yeah, again, I thought so, but I just, I, like I said, it, I'm talking about other people's databases, so I can't yeah. be careful right. enough. I believe it's just yeah. the pro And the worst case scenario is if the campaigns were to stop, just turn it again. Yeah. You know, most hopefully you're using the date-based campaigns. If I'm going to give you guys any advice, use the date-based campaigns. That way, if anything ever happens, you can just turn it on again and pick up right where you left off. Right. So there's interval-based and date-based. Okay. The interval-based campaign says, today I'm going to send out this card. 30 days from now, I'm going to send out this card. 30 days from now, I'm going to send out this card. So that means if I turn on the campaign for you six months ago, you're getting card number seven. I turn on the campaign for you today, you're getting card number one. Right? You're getting card number three. You're getting card number five. Now, we delete the campaign. You're all getting card number one again when we turn it back on. Whereas if you make it calendar-based, right, if you stick to the calendar-based campaigns, all of your campaigns will always end at the same time. Right? Think about it. Imagine your database. I would imagine if you're using interval-based campaigns, one of the hardest things for you is probably trying to keep track of whose campaign ended and when, right? If you're using a date-based campaign, they all end on March 31st, or 30th. Probably days are on March 31st, right? 
31. Okay? On March 31st, they all end. And on, on, on April whatever, you turn on all the new ones based on the group that they're in, and you just move along. If you're using interval-based campaigns, yours ended a week ago and I missed it. So guess what? You're not getting a campaign now. Yours ended six months ago and I missed it. Yours ends tomorrow and I caught it. So you're going to get a new campaign. You two are not. You see what I'm saying? If it's calendar-based, it's much easier. And then if something was to wipe out, like I said, you just turn the campaign back on and everybody picks on it when you left off because everybody's always in the same place. Right. Calendar-based is far superior. There's not, you don't have any choices for calendar-based. And again, I don't want to go jumping into teaching a course here, but it doesn't matter what you well, said. That's yeah. right. It's the consistency of it's not what you say, it's the consistency with which you say it. That's it. That's it. It's a top of mind thing. And again, you don't need pro for those things. So if you want to use pro, if you have a reason, if you see pro as being profitable for you, it shouldn't be any trouble to spend another 50 a month. It just shouldn't. Okay? If you don't see pro, it's not going to be a big deal to transition. I'm not going to say it's no deal, but it's not going to be hard. We'll just have to, again, we would have to talk, Chris, about setting up some workshops and having enough people to make sure everybody can do it. it listen, we have a big enough staff here. I still say we. <laughs> <laughs> For 30 years, I still say we. There's a big enough staff here. You know, there'll be enough training, enough, you know, um, uh, planning ahead to get it ready that if you guys wanted to, get out of it, you could do that. What I would recommend you do immediately though is check your domains. See if you own it or not, and if so, start that process. Just start getting that, just start getting it. Right. Any questions for me? All right, hopefully, yeah, that's fine. Hopefully this is what we were supposed to cover because like I said, I was kind of expecting something a little different. So hopefully I covered the right stuff.